Good morning, guys. I will be ready live in two minutes, two minutes away. And today it's Makeover Monday. And I've got uh, some friends and fellow entrepreneurs joining me to talk about pivoting businesses and the opportunities around us. And I think this is going to be an incredible conversation. Hope you can join me. I'll be live in just two minutes. Stand by. By the way, if you're watching this on the replay, just skip ahead two minutes and you can skip this part of the video. Be live in two. Stand by. All right, I'm actually gonna fire this up 20 seconds early. All right, call it 15 seconds early. Good morning. I am uh, not live in the office this morning. I am actually live from the corner of my master bedroom because this weekend I did something stupid. I lifted a big grant bag of decomposed granite and I have a lift restriction because of prior back surgeries. And I completely tweaked my lower back to the point where like I'm walking like I'm a hundred years old. Like you ever see the the movies where there's an old guy walking and he's just shuffling his feet? That's me. And so I am sitting in a chair, I am taking medicine for pain, and I'm really not moving very much because um, it hurts. And so I said to my wife, I'm like, I'm gonna sit in the corner of the bedroom and I've got her little beach sign behind me keep calm and pretend we're on the beach. And um, we're just gonna roll that way because you know what, life happens. We're all human, we're all subject to just things happening. And kind of like what happened to us over the last couple of months. You know, let's, let's roll this back to, I don't know, late February. We were all rolling along, business as usual, and life seemed like it was great. Things were awesome. We were off to a good, healthy year. The bull market was continuing. The run was strong. And then we started hearing these little things about this virus, this COVID thing, this COVID-19 thing. And everyone was like, oh, it's just a flu, which is, well, whatever. And then while I was on spring break with my kids, and of course, we were on a cruise of all things, the zombie apocalypse occurred and COVID became the thing that everyone talked about. It became the thing that controlled our lives. And soon this virus that was just a kind of a passing conversation came to the forefront and the economy stopped and businesses were shuttered and lots of business owners froze like a deer in the headlights, they panicked. And when things go south, you have two options, and I've talked about this since day one. You have option one, which is do nothing, just panic. Option two is you pivot. And by pivoting, I don't mean you have to change your business, but you have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to adapt to the current market, the current situation. And oftentimes, people get stuck. They don't know how to react, and, and fear takes over. And that's the worst thing. But you also have to know this. Fear is just in your head. It's a thought and it's not real, right? Think about this. The fear that you have 
the catastrophizing of what if is just a thought, it's not real. And so I've been spending a lot of time talking about that and talking about mindset and talking about what to do and how to pivot. And, and then over the past few weeks, I've had some great conversations with some dear friends. And, um, and before I introduce uh, Jessica, let me kind of back up a couple of years. Um, Jeff and Jessica Samus, two people that I absolutely adore and um, have known them now for several years, was invited to speak at one of their conferences um, a few years back, then was privileged to be invited back. And, and then of course this year, COVID happened and life stopped, but things didn't stop for them. Things didn't stop in their business. Things pivoted in their business and as things should pivot in yours. And so this morning, I bring my friend Jessica on to join me and to talk about pivoting and to talk about opportunities and to talk about what they've been doing in their business and how you should be thinking about your business. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Ken. Thanks for being here. And uh, yeah, I am i don't have zombies with me this morning. I'm just, I'm in my bedroom like an old man. You have a zombie inside. Right. That's right. The heart of with you. That's right. Yeah. So, so talk to me a little bit about what's been going on in your world and what you're seeing with all the entrepreneurs that you're connected with, and and just kind of, you know, as I've talked about the last few months, let's let's kind of go back a little bit and talk about the last few months in your world and your business and the, the, the just how you've pivoted. Yeah. And you're smi- you've got a great smile, which is good. <laughs> that tells me things are good. Yeah, things are pretty good. I mean, I think you you hit the nail on the head perfectly, right? A lot of, like, I think it fundamentally comes down to two different emotions, right? Like, we either can operate out of love or we can operate out of fear. And whichever we choose is really going to depend on how we feel every day, the results that we create, the opportunities that exist. And so I think a lot of times situations like this, they, they feed on the fear, right? But I think that for for us, it's, it's always seeing where the opportunity is. Because if in any situation, in anything in life, you really always have the choice between two perspectives. You can either be afraid um, and hide, or you can, you know, embrace the change and and, and evolve. And I think, and I believe that um, in human history, the number one thing that is constant is change. Right? We are not designed as people, or a society, or a, an environment to stay the same. And so I think when you um, approach it with that perspective, it becomes a new exciting time where you can um, really be the change agent that people rely on and depend on instead of being the person who's hiding in the corner. And that's sort of what we've chosen to do, um, you know, in our business and how we've helped, um, you know, our members as well. Um, I'd say that for us, our business hasn't really changed that, that much. But that's because we designed our life to um, be outside of the system, right? Because unfortunately, systems are really designed to fail us. It, it's not what we'd like to think, but at the end of the day, it sort of is in that situation. And so um, I think to be an entrepreneur at your core means that you really want to take control and you want to, um, you know, create whatever reality that, that you really want. And so, um, you know, to us, it's, it's the most exciting time. And I feel like because, you know, we have the opportunity to be leaders, you know, yourself and myself and Jeff included, have been in the business game for a long time. So I feel a sense of responsibility to be a leader and to help other people who maybe this is the first time they've experienced something like this in their business. But the reality is that situations like this, maybe not exactly like this, but recessions and um, um, economic environmental changes happen consistently. Um, And so you have to, as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, know how to handle them and how to keep a level head and keep your mindset strong, especially in these moments. Um, And that's how you can, you know, survive and thrive 
through these times. It's not just about survival, it's about thriving. A hundred percent. You know, I, I think it's okay to, to acknowledge the fact that when these moments occur, and as to your point, Jessica, nothing like this has ever happened before, no. right? This is a kind of a, well, I mean, it's happened before, but not when we were alive. No, and not when we were alive. This is our version of that. Like we, you know, but it's okay to have that moment where you go, oh, right? You gasp. It, it happened to me. Oh, yeah. Right? You wouldn't be human if that didn't happen. But then what you have to do is, is get your wits about you and go, how am I going to deal with this? Yeah. Because the, if, if your business is a, either going to do one of two things. It's either going to grow or it's going to stop. Yeah. Right. There's there's nothing in the middle. Stasis is not a good place to be. You do not no. want to be static. You always want to be growing. And if you're not growing, your business is dying. And so how do you continue to grow when there's uncertainty? And I think part of it and a big part of it has to do with this. Because people tend to freeze. They They see a challenge. And because they don't know how to respond to that challenge, they do nothing, which is the worst thing you could do. Absolutely now, the worst thing. could you make a mistake in your first pivot? Could, could you say, ooh, let me try this and fail? Absolutely. Yeah. But you learn from that. And that failure is a learning experience that you, your brain then goes, okay, I'm not going to do that again. Let me do this. And, and you work your way through it. And, and you have challenges. I, I know for, for you, one of the things that I have been for the last couple of years, I've like, you've got to stay, you've got to get on social. You have to like, really like jump into social, jump into social. I know. And right. And, and you, you finally really jumped feet first into social. And, um, and you messaged me the other day and you were like, oh my God, why didn't I do this sooner? I know, right? Right. But, but that that's a pivot and it's a great pivot for you because you're super gregarious you're outgoing you're you've got just a bubbly personality like you, it's perfect for social and you've got hair like i don't <laughs> and so you know I, I all day long the only thing i can do is like bitmoji myself um, you could get you some wigs i mean looking yeah i could i could that would be phenomenal um but, but talk to me and talk to the audience a little bit about what you've done in terms of pivoting and what your what your members are doing and how they're dealing with the, the challenges of what's going on right now. For sure. And for those who maybe don't know a little bit about me, like I, I specifically work with local businesses and I have a bunch of members who also work with a bunch of um, local businesses. I help teach and educate them on how to do their job. And then, you know, I also um, lead by example and also do that as well. Um, so um, for, for us, I think that Jeff and I kind of have been around the block a little bit. So we've been kind of preparing and like, you know, because we've had meetings with you last year about the fact that we knew a recession was coming. We knew that something like this was due. And, and it's because you, we study history and we, we pay attention to the patterns that happen in, in, in the economy, as well as the government, as well as business and how the three kind of interact and connect to each other. And so that's something that we were planning for last year. And it's been something that we've been working on for the last yeah, 12 to 18 months, which is really, really exciting. Um, we used to run a high ticket um, membership program um, that was very exclusive. Um, you know, it was expensive to get into, but definitely very valuable. And a lot of the shifts that we've been able to help members achieve is substantial. And so I don't feel like, um, I feel like we had probably even underpriced what our, our content was before, but we just felt this nagging sense that we wanted to be more accessible. Um, we wanted something where, you know, information is becoming commoditized. Um, everywhere you look, somebody's an expert at something. And I think that um, for us, we always like to just lead by by doing right by people and, and giving more, you know, 
first before we ever ask to receive. And so that's just sort of our nature. And so I am, um, we've designed a whole new platform that is more uh, affordable for anybody um, that has everything a person would need. And so that's been our pivot, you know, so that we can be more accessible, especially now when people are starting to um be more awake to the fact that they need to take control of their life, their destiny, and people are being laid off left, right, and center. I think my dad told me something like Air Canada, um, an airline back in Canada, just laid off 20,000 employees. Um, in Las Vegas, the MGM casinos laid off 80,000 um, employees, and they had 90,000 to begin with. So to give you a sense, I mean, they, they really laid off 80% of their staff. And I was talking to an Uber driver the other day, and she was saying that, um, you know, she can't even get benefits because they work for casinos. And the government assumes that the casinos are going to take care of the unemployment benefits for their people, but they're not doing it. Instead, they're replacing carpets or doing whatever improvements they need to do. And um, so people are like, desperate they want something and so for us i feel like so confident um and so excited that you know we've we were at least thinking about this ahead of time so that right when this hit we were ready to you know to be a solution um for our members um who work with the with local businesses day in day out it's just pivoting how they help the business owners because some businesses unfortunately are forced to shut down and there's nothing that um, we can really do about that but what we can do is guide them on how they can still operate and still have uh, an ability to connect with their customers provide their services and maybe a bit of a different way so you know maybe a chiropractor can do virtual sessions over the phone maybe teaching stretching or different exercises and run run um, their their process that way a lot of clients with chiropractors are on, already on monthly auto pay so instead of just cutting it off you just provide a different solution so that you give value to your customers and have an ability to continue your um, your monthly revenue going for others um, you know I know I personally helped um, a supplement company in the last 30 days transition to e-commerce so they traditionally only sold their products through GNC or Popeyes or different supplement store chains and when everything shuts down, well, they have an inability to sell their products. However, not because the consumer doesn't want them. The consumer definitely wants them, but they they need a way to be able to purchase it. So we you know, built him a whole e-commerce store, launched his um, advertising campaigns so that he can, you know, still operate his business. And, and the one thing he told me was, wow. I, I can't believe I didn't do this sooner because now I don't have to pay intermediaries. I can ship direct to consumer. Um, so he actually can um, collect and keep more income um, and more revenue um, through direct to consumer. And so he's saying that even if things open up, he's still going to you know continue his e-commerce um, presence because now he instead of selling just during store hours, he can sell seven days a week, 24 hours a day um, without interruption. And um, it's great. Um, local restaurants have turned their staff maybe into delivery um, so that they mm -hmm. do white glove service. So it's just been guiding. Um, first of all, mindset is a big piece and how where we focus and making sure that people see the opportunity. Um, it's actually in these moments that the greatest wealth can be created, right? Because it's, it's the times where transfer of wealth happens. And if you look at history it's always happened and the the people who win and the people who get that wealth transferred to them are usually the people who are providing solutions that that are needed in that time so during the great depression the need was really military warfare and so companies that offered automation of, of production like Ford or other companies that could produce really quickly to supply, um, you know, stuff for, for war affairs were the, the companies who soared and, and, and got that transfer of wealth. And in this day and age, the, the need is really to become online. And, and I believe that this trend is going to continue regardless of if we go back to you know everything being full 
fully open. And I think that that people are starting to become more aware where there maybe were a bit more hesitant before. Um, and I think they're loving it, to be honest with yeah, you. For sure. You think about all of the big box stores, box retailers, um, Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom's, right now, both of them are in serious financial trouble. Seriously. And yeah, and you, you look at that and you go, okay, why are they in financial trouble? They do have online components, but online has always been the redheaded stepchild of their business, yes. not the primary driver. That's right. And today you want to have an online presence that is dominant. And no matter what the business is, you can do this. So, so you know, you mentioned the vertical chiropractors. Every chiropractor out there can create their own home back care course and have a membership program around that. I look at the guys from Move You who are a bunch of physical therapists, they're brilliant. And they've had an online um, wellness thing for years and they teach people how to stretch properly and how to, how to ambulate properly and how to loosen this muscle and flex that muscle. And, and it's not about building muscle, it's not an online training, it's, it's a physical wellness thing, right? right. So you, you can do this in virtually any business but one. There's only one business that can't go virtual. Yeah. Actually, it, it can. I just thought that, I just said that and then I count. By the way, I will contradict myself all the time and I just okay, did. I do too. Funeral homes. That's they right. can. And, and I thought to myself- Although they that's can't. not true because my grandmother just passed away last week. And um, um, so, it's it was really sad on um, she didn't pass away luckily to corona um she she just died of old age nice peacefully in her sleep it was just her time but the fear with the family was okay well this is all going on and my sister is a nurse in canada and she said well there's no funerals so like sorry mom like we can't do this and my mom was mm -hmm. obviously devastated um but the funeral home um had a virtual funeral so i couldn't go home which was really sad i really wanted to be with my family but they did a live stream and it was amazing it felt like we were right there and in fact my family was all talking about how it was actually better and we wish that when my grandfather passed away we had this option because we have family all over the world like um yeah. my mom's sisters live in india and they can't come to canada for the funeral so they were able to attend her funeral via live stream um when they couldn't do that for their father so i think that you know there are still opportunities for the funeral homes and we were saying that we hope they keep this because it's really cool and you know people can pay their respects if they want to um that way and it, it we sent i sent an email out to my entire extended family um with the link and we have so many people attend and then we can view, my mom can even view the the um the the recording for 90 days after so i think it's it's a it is possible not completely yeah. possible but i think businesses will always have a need for both right a physical presence and an online presence and and there's a, a way to marry the two and i think that I was very impressed with how this funeral home um, had done it because I was initially planning to just set up a Zoom or do something, but um, they kind of had it taken care of, which was really nice. So there, as I was gonna say, they can't, but they do. And I thought, wait, no, wait a second, this is super pivotal. And so there really, there really isn't a business out there that can't adjust to where we're at today. And I think part of it is looking not only at the opportunities within your industry, but looking in complementary industries. You know, um, for the last couple of years, we've had clients on occasion say, "Hey, why don't you guys do offer you know graphic design ads for your for your ad copy? Why don't you do product photography?" And you know, hey, great opportunity for us to do that. And so we we've added these services on now. We just started adding them on. As in fact, the last week or so. And so we're just starting to ramp this up. And, and I've been saying to my team, hey, I, we, we're gonna need a bigger space. And so for us, the way we get a bigger space isn't by creating the new opportunity, it's by getting uncomfortable with what that opportunity brings. Yeah. And so when we're working you know, full speed 
um, and we just are at capacity in the space, that's when we go, okay, we need something bigger. And then we move. We don't look at the space and go, we're gonna grow into it. We wanna grow out of the space we're in. And I think that that has a lot to do with mindset. I don't, I don't want people to have, um, it's great to have pie in the sky ambition, but I like to get so busy, so in the trenches and so overloaded with what we're doing that we grow to that point that we yeah. achieve. So we set a goal and our goal is to get uncomfortable and then we get uncomfortable and we move into that bigger space, right? So I think it's just the way you frame it in your head. But for me, and Jessica, I know you you know this from, from having spent time with me, business is like a video game to me. Me too. And it's, it's not about necessarily the dollars that come from it. It's winning the game. It's, it's the high score. And a high score doesn't have to be dollars. It has to be being the best at what we do and achieving whatever that goal is that I, that I set. And sometimes I set really weird goals for different things, um, whether it's a subscriber amount or whether it's a dollar amount. But it oftentimes is not dollar-based. It's more like achieving these little micro accomplishments along the way. Uh -huh. And, and I, I just find that when you aim for things that are achievable, when you can have little wins along the way, it really sets your mind up for future success and future growth because you're always accomplishing and always winning, right? If you start a diet with a goal of losing 150 pounds, that's a really formidable goal. It's too hard to Exactly. But if you start with a, if I want to lose five pounds this month and you wind up losing 15, then yeah. you've crushed that goal, yes. right? And it sets you up for the next month. And so I think a lot of businesses need to start thinking about how do you create these micro wins yes. in your industry? And so how do you create micro wins and how do your members, like what does a micro win look like for you guys? And yeah. I know, by the way, and I know I'm throwing you questions that we... We didn't like sketch out what is this conversation no. going to look like. I like to go live and just like have a conversation. So um, if, if I throw you a curveball, just, you know, say, man, that was a curveball. Because um, I know I'm just asking you questions off the top of my head. No, but, but it's good. I mean, I live, eat and breathe um, like entrepreneurship and business. So I think that it's it's all good. All this stuff is always so top of mind for me. Um, and I think like with with micro wins, like one big thing that we do every every January is we do a, or actually we do it at the end of December because we want people having this done for January 1st. But we really um, focus and do a vision call um, where we break down, um, you know, our goal setting process. Um, we call them targets. We don't like to call them goals because a goal to us signifies something you're constantly chasing and never right. achieve, where a target is something that is meant to be smashed. And so for us, that that psychological trigger is a little bit different. Um, and and it, it's just personal preference it, it there by no means do you have to call them targets over goals but it's, it's just like me it, sure and it's like me calling things challenges not problems right right it's just how you relate to it right and i think the more that you again focus on mindset and personal development the more you realize that there's certain things that trigger certain emotions in you and then you you real you start to pay attention to what causes certain results for you and it's going to be different for every person so for us we choose targets because we like to smash them and um, we break things down, you know, how we want things to look by the end of the year. And it doesn't necessarily need to be in year increments. It's just something that we've done every year for 10 years. So we want we plan out where we want to be next Christmas. What do we want our life to look like next Christmas? And we get really emotional about it. Imagining writing a letter to ourselves that it's December 25th of the next year. And what does life look like? What was the year been like? How do you feel? Um, what impact have you made what were your lessons like what disciplines did you take care of and then once you've done that what we teach is you break out um you break that out now that you have your final goal into okay quarterly goals and um weekly goals um so that you know that um that you've planned out so it's not just um 
you know, pie in the sky targets that you actually calculate out, okay, if I want this much revenue, that means I have to do this many sales, which means I have to do this many calls, which means I have to prospect this many people. And the more clear you are on those numbers, which we help um, our, our members do and understand what their key performance indicators are, or we call them KPIs. Um, once you get clear on those, it becomes, like you said, a video game because you know that if you insert um, these things, maybe, maybe it'll take a little bit more, but you'll always be on the right track and always on the right path. And I think it also comes down to it's not always just the number, right? It's the process of being consistent. It's the process of taking action um, consistently over a period of time. Some targets are gonna take you longer than expected. Other targets you're gonna hit probably sooner than expected, um, but that's totally normal. And I think that as long as you're focusing on progress and what you can do and what actions you can take will result in what outcome you can create. And I think that a lot of times um, people focus so much on the outcome that they forget to focus on the activity that's going to cause the outcome. And so the focus is always just on the end result. But to me, the focus should be on the journey and what what steps you can take um, on a consistent basis. And I, I stress the importance of consistency because consistency is really what allows these outcomes to become real. Yep. And, you know, along the journey, you're going to have days where your consistency sucks. Yeah. And you're going to you're going to have days where you feel like shit. And that's OK. It's going to go according to plan. And I mean, you could be the most successful person in in the world and you'll still have days like that. So it's just learning to have a little bit of grace for yourself in those moments. Sometimes it's just, you don't feel like it. Like I know on Saturday, I would I had a big list of things to do. And I just, I kept saying to Jeff, oh my gosh, I just don't, I don't feel like doing anything, but I just forced myself to do whatever I could do. And then at the end of the day, I at least was grateful and glad that I got something done. Did I get everything done that I wanted to? No but I didn't completely like let my goals slip away and give up. I just did what I could to, and I definitely did more than I thought I was capable of. So I think that's also it too, is just people are so hard on themselves. Like you're way harder on yourself than anyone ever is. So I think it's having a bit of grace for yourself and understanding because if you're too hard on yourself, you're probably not going to do what you're supposed to do the next day. Correct. And it's going to continue and it's going to get even worse. You know, Jessica, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, you know, yes, people are very hard on themselves, but they also oftentimes stop pushing themselves when they get a little bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think that's such a critical thing. Every single day, I do at least two to three things that make me uncomfortable. Yes. Now, I do that partially because I need to break through my own barriers, right? Okay, so so I'm gonna have a moment of just like me being completely raw. I have obstacles and barriers in my life, just like everybody else. And yes. people tend to look at the the stuff that I do in my business and the the it's weird having a following and they think, oh man, you're crushing it and you're doing great. And but yet they don't know about the challenges that I've had that morning at home with the family. They don't know about what's going on in this area of the business and what this challenge is and that challenge is. We have these things. So every day I make sure that I do two or three things that make me really uncomfortable, that push me out of my comfort zone and rise above the challenges that I have, whether those challenges are business or whether those challenges are personal. Yeah. But we all have them. And so I, I want you to just, for, for those that are watching, just understand that no matter what you think of someone else's life or business, they still have the same bullshit that you do and the same problems that you do. I'll never forget this conversation. I'm walking out of the Phoenix Suns um, game one night and I was walking to the car with Sean Marion, who played for the Suns back in the day. And we're walking to the car. And as we're walking to his car, I said, Sean, I said, tell me, what, like, what's your most proud moment? Like, what, what moment are you most proud of in the NBA? 
And he looked at me and he goes, you know, Spanky, it's when I bought my mom a house. And Amazing. Right, we all have normal lives, right? To him, buying a house was his most proud accomplishment. To you, it might be making a million dollars. Now, that's another thing. Everybody's got these goals of like, when my business does a million dollars a year, I'm going to be making it. When my business does five million, let me just tell you, that is not happiness. The problem is to just increase the more you succeed. Like honestly, right. the the bigger the bigger you earn, the more issues you have. Like it doesn't dissipate. It doesn't go away. It's not like there's yeah. this like miracle life that exists on the other side. Like we still deal with nonsense all the time but you you I think what you when you made the point about you try to make yourself uncomfortable a couple of times a day I feel like we do that too and what it teaches you is to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and then you yep. actually enjoy the process of being put on the spot because um and and actually it's an interesting thing that you brought up because when all this started to happen this pandemic i looked at jeff and i said you know we're like phoenix right like we like we rise when stuff goes crazy and it's because we've like taught we taught ourselves that putting our back against the wall is when we have to you know perform and and not allow the the negative negativity to affect you and so it's actually in moments like this i feel even more energy i feel even more excited mm -hmm. and i because i've been training myself to be uncomfortable on a daily basis and and i no longer feel like that's a bad thing i actually feel more depressed when i um am sitting idle and i'm not doing anything i've noticed that about myself because sometimes the you know when you build a big business you have the ability to have leverage right you have systems or people or things working um in tandem for you and so it, it does buy you back some freedom and i i did notice that um you know there'd be moments where if i wasn't being productive or if i was just sitting idle i'd feel depressed and it's because i am used to you know being in a certain way and it's it's what i connect with and it wasn't always like that i had to teach myself to be like that um over a period of time but i wouldn't change it for the world no, neither would I. And I think, um, you know, right now, a lot of business owners are trying to figure out how to A, keep their business on track, B, um, grow their business. And here we are telling them, C, you need to also be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And they're probably thinking to themselves, I'm really uncomfortable right now and this doesn't feel good. But you know what? In that discomfort, that's when you find that inner grit. And that's when you, you're able to go, okay, wait a second, I've got this, I can do this. And you push through to that next level, whatever that barrier is. Like you, you step into something you probably didn't even think was inside of you. And, and the, the feeling that you get inside is, is insane. I, I mean, at the end of the day, like if entrepreneurs are worried, I mean, they, it's it's normal to be worried, but to let the fear stop you into paralysis is is not the way to go. Because you worked really hard to build your business, you 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 put your blood, sweat, and tears in it. I don't care what business you have. I don't care what level you've built your business to. The point is that if you have a business, you built that thing with blood, sweat, and tears, and you you have you can't let it die it's your child it's your baby it's yeah. an extension of you and so you have to step up you have to rise that calling inside of you is strong and the reality is that okay maybe if you have a little bit of a setback maybe maybe business slows down a little bit um maybe maybe things go a little bit negative when they used to be positive maybe those things happen but the reality is if you did it once you can do it again and and that's the creed of an entrepreneur is if you do something once you can do it again and so don't give up don't don't put your hands up in the air and 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 quit it it might be hard um but it's worth it what's the alternative like i don't i don't understand what the alternative would be 
Um, and honestly, like the government's not really helping you out that much. Like you need to take control and, and pivoting may provide you a lifestyle or an opportunity that you didn't even think was possible. Maybe you'll get more freedoms than you ever had before. Maybe this is the biggest blessing in disguise for this amazing life that's right on the other corner, around the other corner, sorry. Yeah, and just remember that um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that is something that I think a lot of people forget. You know, it could be painful. This could be a sucky time. You may have to get rid of your BMW and get a Toyota Corolla. But guess what? It's a way more practical car. And what doesn't <laughs> kill you makes you stronger. And, and what does matter? Like all that stuff is just materialistic. I mean, nobody's right. taking anything away from you. All your experience is still yours. Your skill set and your knowledge is still yours. The rest of it's yep. just stuff. It's just replaceable. I mean, I've, I've, you know, had lots of things and I've had no things, but at the end of the day, I still have me. I still have my mind. I still have my, my, my abilities and nobody can take that away from me. And you have an amazing head of hair. Just <laughs> thank you. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for joining me today. If there's uh, if there are small business owners that are looking to grow or struggling with things and they want to learn from you and Jeff. How do they do that? Um, you can right now, like we're in the process of flipping our platform. So our um, old domains are kind of, I'm not going to promote them just because we're making Got them. it. So if people want, they can follow me on Instagram at Jessica Samus and send me, send me a DM. And I, I mean, the, the thing is, I love people. I love connecting with people. I believe my calling is, is to, to help people. And I believe that if you help enough people get what they want in life, you will get what you want. And I really believe Jeff and I were put on this earth, um, to, to help people create, um, their, their, their dreams and create them to be realities. And so, um, yeah, send me a message and, and connect. I, I just love getting to know people and seeing if there's anything that I can ever do to help. Um, you know, I'm, I'm around and I'm here and it's, it's what I love to do. I eat, breathe and sleep it. So, um, yeah. As, as do I. So I love yeah. it as well. So thank you so much for popping in with me today. I appreciate you and hopefully i'll be seeing you in a few weeks fingers crossed that i hope so we can all right i look forward to seeing you soon thanks for having me ken thank you bye and there we go so jessica samus and um you know i wanted to bring her on because she is such a positive human being and she and jeff have really pivoted beautifully during this um, incredibly challenging time. And I think every one of us can learn from that and has the opportunity to pivot. So if you've got questions and are wanting to talk about your uh, business and how you can pivot right now, this is an opportunity for you to jump in. Jump into the live stream. I've posted the link below or you can comment below. But I think Jessica said it so beautifully and um, I think she did an amazing job and I'm just so grateful that she made the time to join me today. While I'm doing that, several of you have said, hey, what is this? Uh, now, I know a lot of people are connected with me on um, Facebook and other platforms and have asked about this new addition to our family. In fact, I got a message from someone that said, hey, um, we haven't seen any pictures of the new addition to the family. So I'm going to grab a picture of the new addition to the family and, uh, and share it with you. So give me a moment here. I'm doing this on one screen today. I'm not sitting in front of Megadesk. And for those of you who know what my office setup is like, I have Megadesk at the office. So this is a little more challenging for me trying to navigate this all on one screen. Actually, it's quite challenging, to be honest with you. But let me pull up the picture. And this is, oh, it's not gonna work for me. Oh, I love when technology doesn't work for me. Okay, well, I can't show you the picture. I lied, I thought I could. I was gonna bring it up, but I cannot. Um, I was gonna show you a picture of Nala, our newest addition. And Nala is a rescue Weimaraner. And uh, for those of you who follow me, 
you can uh, see pictures of Nala on my Facebook and I'll make sure that I post one in the comments. Actually, that's what I can do. Can I post it in the comments here? Okay, I will do that later. So, okay, that's gonna wrap me up for this morning. Hopefully tomorrow morning, I'll be back in the office. It just depends on how my back um, handles recovery from my stupid mistake. Uh, I hope you guys have an amazing day. If you have questions, challenges, thoughts about your business and you want to share them with me, feel free to reach out to me, DM me, email me. I would love to be a tool in your tool belt. Hope you have an amazing Monday. I will talk to you tomorrow morning. Have a good one.